And why have they not just been the breath of fresh air we have been waiting for? Their addition to the Rugby World Cup team here at SABC has elevated our offering to the public, which is always front and center in our broadcasting. And you heard his voice in the commentary. Now he joins us on Zoom. It is, of course, Renier Swart. And... Um, in case you're looking behind me, we're going to see the pictures coming off. Renia is not the man on the right because we heard the Sitswana. The Sitswana is coming from the man on my left. Renia Swart also joined by former Springbok and SABC sport analyst for this Rugby World Cup, Lawrence Apaka. Gentlemen, a good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Renia, let me start with you because I'm sure you still, after 20 plus years doing commentary for SABC in Sitswana, Afrikaans and English, people still get the surprise of their lives when they hear you um, changing between these three languages with so much ease. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, it's really a privilege to talk to South Africans and uh, it's nice. We should all do it. We should all learn that extra language because uh, it's very important in South Africa or in this whole world that we should join up uh, and talk the languages of the people. How about in Kakinta? Because now I don't know what to do. What does that mean? I don't know what to do. 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 Le fa tsika 95 ka dintla tse tharo fela. So dintla di di botlhokwa mo mo tshame kongo na wa wa rugby mo tshame kongo mo ngwe mongwe. Le ga le go cricketing le ga le gore ke 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 mo tsama o le mongwe fela o o tsereng gore o o fenye mo tshame go go ntse go tshwana fela. Hi, Ntlakintla. You heard it yourself, South Africa. Let me move on to you, Lawrence. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Lawrence, when we look at that encounter between South Africa and France, someone would be fooled if they looked at just the plain statistics because if you look at those stats, you wouldn't think South Africa is the team that then went on to win that encounter. What do you make of the clash between France and South Africa? Yeah, good morning and to your viewers as well. Um, no, listen, that game was a freak of nature. I mean, everything was against us. States counted against us. The French were really playing out of their skins. I mean, you one would feel sorry for them because if you honestly, being honest with yourself, they did everything right, but just failed to manage the scoreboard. And we did everything right in terms of um, just counting and staying within touch of, of the scoreboard. So they couldn't really pull away and get away. But I suppose that's a character on its own because that's one thing that a lot of teams cannot do. We did the one main thing and probably not the most of it and France did the most of it. But that one thing that we needed to do to make sure we win the, the score battle, we did absolutely brilliantly and we didn't waste any time. They, I mean, I don't know if that was a planned thing, but I'll tell you, those te the, the team, especially in the end, because our hearts were like sitting in our throats, at some point there were two minutes to go to France in our half. How they managed to do that, that was a discipline of the highest caliber. And one should commend them and say, listen, with that kind of discipline, nothing is impossible. And, and perhaps, Renier, it also came down to just our experience as three-time world champions that, that made all the difference for us at the end. Because you look at, for instance, South Africa winning a penalty against France in the second half. And then we opt to, for a tap and go, over an easy three-point penalty. It's those decisions at the end of the day that made a difference in terms of the margins. Yes, definitely. There were, there, there were decisions that we made that were very questionable as well. I mean, I, I can just think of, of uh, uh, the, 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 the decision that was made by Willemsa at the back, actually, that for going for a scrum <laughs> after uh, uh, having a free kick. Uh, that surprised us all, but it worked out for South Africa. And I think that sent a message to the forwards of saying, guys, you can do it. Mm. You can control them in the scrums and you can do it. And, and that could be a big turning point. And, and you're right. I think uh, a lot of decisions that were made were made at the right time and in the right way of of going towards this game. We were we were under threat from the minute that the, that the ball was kicked off. We had to defend. We were we were a little bit in in the uh, surprised. Everybody was surprised by that first attack, but mm. how we came back, 
I think that shows character. And as you say, it shows experience from a very experienced side, uh, the same side that's going to take on England, um, the uh, uh, experienced side of South Africa, and, and it shows it. Uh, and I think we, we did very well. We did do very well. And Lawrence, just speaking on that experience and that character of this side, let's talk now about tomorrow's match up against England. It's a repeat of the 2019 final, 23-man unchanged squad from coach Jacques Ninaba. What are your expectations in terms of performance tomorrow against this English side? Listen, I think this time they're probably in a better position than they were last year because I think England, last World Cup, sort of got a lot of confidence from beating the All Black in the semis. But this stage, I think they're still not showing us any glimpses of how they really can beat us because they've really been scraping through. Well, I think the best game they played was the first game in the World Cup when they beat Argentina. And after that, they just proved again how to win in an unwinnable match. Basically, managed to steal matches from under Jose's mouth at times, which sometimes didn't make sense how they did it. But the Springboks need to be wary of that, though. Although the advantage now would be on the Springbok side, but the danger of that is complacency from the Springbok side. So hopefully they don't go in there. Let us be complacent as spectators, but they should go in there with the focus of mainly doing their job. Just doing their job, doing the basic correctly. I think they're also not 100% in that regard because they haven't got everything that they wanted to do the way they used to. Remember, they've set a standard. And that golden standard is something they drive to. We don't put pressure on them. They put pressure on themselves because that's the standard they put up there. That's the country they put up there for themselves to try and beat in each and every time. You said they haven't actually hit those notes like we expect them to. But maybe against England this weekend would be the chance to do that just to get that mental capacity in the right tuning for the final match against uh, whoever wins between Argentina and New Zealand. And Renier, as uh, Lauren speaks about whoever wins between Argentina and New Zealand and they encounter, I think the semi-finalists have um, teams which have talented tight fives, which is the p platform built for victory in rugby. Which teams do you see making it to the final? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a, a very difficult choice. Uh, if you look at form and if you look at how they played in, in, the, in the World Cup, going, uh, going from, from the pool matches even to the quarterfinals, I think uh, we're going to most probably see a Springbok all-black final. Uh, that's the, the most probable probability. But, yeah. but again, uh, do not underestimate the, the teams that are playing Argentina. Now, Argentina picked at the right time. I think they only pick, they're only picking now at the World Cup. They, they, were, they, were, they were useless in, in, in the first pool games type of thing. And, and they were picking up. Uh, so they're going to give New Zealand quite competition, I think, tonight. Uh, and we, we, but New Zealand is a very strong team, and we know it. On the side of the English, we should not underestimate them tomorrow night in the semi-final. Uh, we, as uh, Lars has said, they've got everything going for them except for their mouths. They are trying to get under our skin, and 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 uh, that the, the, I, I'm sure that Rossi and and um, Ninaber will definitely uh, keep the 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 players or the soldiers, if we want to put it that way, uh, in the right position with that, because they can easily get under our skin with their mouths. And and Owen Farrell is a is a marvelous guy to do it for England in that regard. Uh, so yes, I think a final, most probably South Africa and New Zealand, repeating 1995, the first time that we meet again in a final since then and it's going to be a a very big f uh, final if we get to that it's going to be a scorch and like in class thank you so much Rainier smart thank you so much lawrence for your time this morning we look forward to hearing you in commentary and in analysis tomorrow of course for our viewers on sabc too thank you thank you very much we really appreciate and we are honored to be on your show Absolutely amazing when you speak about legends of the game and commentary, Rainier Swart, today.